Well, broadly, there are four ways that I can see. One is devotees decided to enter into politics and try to influence society politically. Uh, this is one challenge which is uh, which you could say it's it's broadly towards Hinduism itself. In some ways, Hindus and Jews both have been strongly persecuted. Jews earlier by Nazis, then before that by Christians, and now recently by Muslims. They were persecuted, and Hindus have also been persecuted. But what happened was, while both of them individually have been quite successful, uh, but Hindus have often focused on careers which are individually lucrative, but not necessarily socially influential. Jews have, have often gone into careers which are also socially influential. And Jews are, are, are influential in careers like law, politics, entertainment, uh, media, journalism. Hindus have gone more into engineering and medicine. They're very valuable contribution to society. But these professions don't mold public opinion. They don't become thought leaders. Engineers and doctors play a very vital role in today's economy and society. But nobody turns towards engineers and doctors for, as thought leaders, very few. So that's one, that's one thing. The first is that we, like, like politics, we, enter, we need to enter into fields which are socially influential and to encourage our children and future generations also to do that. Even in India, for example, we say the media is so biased. The media is so biased against uh, Hinduism. It always portrays things badly. Well, okay, but how are we going to change it? It is because people who were followers of Dharma just neglected the media. They never entered into the media. Then leftists conquer the media. So we need to in enter into politics as one area, but in general, we enter into areas where there is much greater social influence. And second is, of course, that what we discussed, that there has to be a significant emphasis on self-defense and uh, uh, Kshatriya in terms of, Kshatriya can be social influence, Kshatriya can also be in terms of self-defense. So we need to learn self-defense, have adequate security and countermeasure, deterrent measures so that aggressors are warned and deterred. That is required. And another thing is that in many ways, social media has democratized, uh, dem democratized, you could say, sharing of the message. So uh, we can use social media more and more. We don't want to get distracted and consumed by social media, but it is a power that can be leveraged very powerfully. Even if we can't change the mainstream media immediately, but social media can be used to reach out to people more and more. And fourth is that, see, somehow among various religions, uh, all religions have what is called as the Masiha complex. Masiha complex means what? That some Masiha will come and that person will solve all our problems. That person will deliver us. So that is there in, from, right, in Judaism's times. They, they expected some, some prophet to come. Some people thought it was Muhammad. Some, pe some people thought it was Jesus. Some people thought it was Muhammad. But this, is, this seems to be, the, although the idea of a prophet is not so much there within Hinduism, but the idea of thinking that somebody else will solve the problem, that is very big. Whether it is a political leader who will solve the problems or the spiritual leader who will solve the problems. There's one, uh, one very, uh, you could say very good Hinduism scholar who really appreciates Hinduism. He said that, uh, Hinduism, if it is to, it has answers to many of the most pressing problems in the world today. Like for example, you know, nowadays environmental issues are there. One of the biggest ways of solving environmental problems is vegetarianism. And that is intrinsic to Hinduism much more than Buddhism presently. So similarly, uh, many other problems, yoga and so you could say all these have come from Hinduism. But what has happened is that he says, if Hinduism is actually meant to become a force of good for humanity, its, it's, uh, its public face or its central force of influence has to shift from charismatic gurus to educated, rational thought leaders. What happens is we center on the gurus too much. And, and of course, gurus are important. No doubt, no doubt that there are spiritual masters, our senior the gurus are important. But it is the way Buddhism spread in the world was that it was plain clothes Buddhists who presented Buddhism. 
and they reached a lot of people so we need a not so much like a charismatic presentation of spirituality but a rational relevant applicable presentation of spirituality of dharmic wisdom not just spirituality but dharmic wisdom at large so if we do these things then definitely we all can contribute to making a better world so enter into areas of public influence more and more and careers and second is uh, prepare more for self defense and deterrence and third is um, leverage the power of social media and don't like wait for a masiha don't uh, outsource the responsibility for dharma to either some future political leader or some spiritual leader uh, some charismatic spiritual leader it is we who take up the mantle we take up the responsibility and then we can make a significant difference in the world